Hi, in this video we will learn how to create a Google Classroom or find your Google Classrooms and then set them up and add content. First, the easiest way might be to go to your Google Drive, but this does depend on the setting in which you are working. From your Google Drive, you can click on the waffle and then you can click on Classroom. Once you are in your Google Classrooms, it's important to understand the landscape of this home page. In the upper left corner, you have a menu that will give you access to all of your classes. And at the very end of the menu, you will see access to your archived classes. And then beneath that, your settings. If you click on the settings, you will notice that this gives you the option to adjust the settings for the notifications that you receive. I encourage you to scroll all the way down and then specifically click on class notifications if you are trying to turn off notifications for an entire class. This can help keep your email from getting overwhelmed with notifications. Back in the menu and back on the home page, you then also have the plus button, which is where you can either join or create a class. And then you have your tiles for your classes. Note that you can drag and drop these tiles in any order. So if you have classes that are no longer ones you need to access every day, you can move them towards the bottom and have your most commonly needed classes at the top. Once you are in a Google Classroom or you've created a class or it's been rostered to you, click on the title of the class to open it. Every time you open a class, it will land on what's called the stream. The stream is essentially the social media page of your class. It presents everything you have ever posted and anything anyone else in your class has posted if you authorized them to post and comment on the stream. And it shares all those things in reverse chronological order. You can take any one item in the stream, click on the three dots and move it to the top. However, there is no other organizational feature in the stream. The classwork page is where you create your assignments, including a regular assignment, a quiz assignment, a question, which is also a type of assignment, material, reusing posts from this class or any other class. It's essentially a copy post feature. And this is one way to create topics. Topics are the organizational structure of this page. These large headings are each topics that I have created. Every time you create a topic, it populates a menu on the left. We're going to go to a different one of my classes right now so you can see um, one with students in it. The people page is where you can add and manage your co-teachers. Co-teachers have full access to your class and can post announcements, work, and materials. In addition, they can access the gradebook. This is also where you can access the students in your class and you can even take care of some actions with your students such as muting a student who should not be allowed to post or comment in the stream at this time, removing a student who has withdrawn from your class, or emailing a student. The grades page is essentially the gradebook for your classroom and it will show you all of the work that your students have turned in all the work you have returned to them and what remains missing. But where you really want to start when you first open up your Google Classroom is the settings page. On the settings page, you can change the name of your class. This can be really helpful if your class is automatically created by a roster and you would like to change it to a name that your students would recognize it. For example, I was a French teacher, so I used to change all the class names into French. You can get the class code here, but this only works um, if you either are using private Google accounts to create your classes because the class code cannot be used to invite people who are not part of your education domain. Google has your education domain locked down so that those who do not have the same ending portion of your email address cannot join classes even if they are sent the invite code or the class code. The stream is defaulted to students can post and comment. 
However, you can change this to students can only comment or only the teachers can post or comment. But please know that if you change this setting and prevent students from posting and commenting, this will affect one of the assignment features that we'll be talking about later. You will not usually need to show the deleted items, so that is defaulted to off. You should check and see, be sure that your guardian summaries are on. Guardian summaries are the one window that parents and guardians truly have into their students' classrooms unless they log in as the student. Because remember, you can't give parents the join code to an education account in Google Classroom. So a guardian summary will always start with any work that is missing according to Google Classroom from any classes in which it is missing. This is based on due dates that the teacher put in the assignments when the assignments were created. It will then show anything that's coming up as due in the next week. And then it will give a summary of all content that has been posted in the classes starting class by class um, through the student's schedule for the past week. This is a static, no reply document. There are no links in it. There is nothing that the parent can interact with. It is just an image, essentially. So let's go back to our class. There is also an opportunity to set up the gradebook. Do know that if you are not trying to send the grades from Google Classroom out to a spreadsheet file so that you can import them into another gradebook, you don't have to set up the gradebook in order to be able to use it to provide students with feedback on their work. So let's close our class settings and let's take a look at how we can post content in the stream. That's as easy as it gets. Just click where it says share something with your class. Type what it is that you want to share. If you would like to attach either something from Google Drive, a link to a page on the web, a file from your hard drive, or a YouTube video, you can do that here. Notice that if you do choose YouTube video, you will either need to search for the video and then select it. Okay, while that's loading, um, you need to actually click on the video you want to use and choose add, or you can search by URL if you have already copied the URL and you are ready to paste it. Once you do copy that URL, you will need to still select the video from the preview screen. For example, if I paste my video here, I can now add that video now that I'm sure that it's correct. When you're done, you can post right now or you can schedule for later. But another nice feature is that you can also decide that this assign this announcement is appropriate for more than one class and you can select as many classes as you would like for which you are the teacher. If it is just for this class, you can also determine if you need to send it to certain students and not all students. This can be a helpful way to differentiate with your learners as we will see in the assignment feature shortly. So at this point, I'm actually going to cancel that post and we're going to move into where you will do the most work, which is the classwork page. Here, again, you can create all of your assignments. They have a clipboard icon, resource materials. Those have a paper, uh, like a bookmark icon and question assignments, which have a question mark icon. Just click the create button and choose what you would like to create. Let's go ahead and start with the basic assignment. Give your assignment a title. Instructions if you wish. And then at this point, you will either add materials from your Google Drive, a link to a document on the web or a page on the web, a file from your hard drive or a video in YouTube. Or if you needed to create something in your Google Drive but haven't done it yet, you can actually click Create and it will give you access to a series of Google tools that you can use to create this particular assignment. But let's look at one that we might already have done. If we're going to attach it from Google Drive, it's really important to notice that there are some features that are particular to the assignment settings. So pretending that this is a worksheet that I created for my students, probably I would like for them to each write their or type their answers on it and then turn it back into me in Google Classroom. But the default when I attached it was that students can view the file. And this means that they will not in fact be able to type their answers on it. If I select students can edit the file, 
That means that they all can edit the same copy of the file at the same time. So instead, I'm going to choose make a copy for each student. What this will do is distribute each student a copy of this assignment on which they can write or type, and they will turn that into me. It is important to know that this is exactly like making a copy at the copy machine, meaning that if you then go back to your computer and change the document on your computer, the paper copies have not changed. So it is very important that this document be in its final form and that you do not need to make any changes to it after you have attached it here. Again, you can always choose if it is appropriate for more than one class. If it is for that same class, you can assign it to individual students instead of all students. This is really helpful, for example, if you have leveled readings on the same content so that learners can approach the content at their level of challenge. You can actually create the assignment multiple times and each time attach the correct version of the reading and assign it to just the specific students who need that version of the reading. Do note that in Google Classroom, every assignment, quiz assignment, and question assignment is automatically worth 100 points unless you change it. You can change it to ungraded, or you can simply change the point value. You may set a due date. This is how Google Classroom knows that things are missing. You may also give a time if you would like. You may either select a topic from the topics you have already created, or if you need to create a topic that isn't there yet, you simply choose Create Topic and type the topic title. If you would like to attach a rubric to this assignment, which will be available in the gradebook area when you go to give students feedback, you can click on the rubric and create a rubric, reuse a rubric, or import one from Sheets. I recommend that you create a rubric right here in Google Classroom because it does all the mathematical formulas in the background for you. If you import from Sheets, you will have to also include the spreadsheet formulas in the appropriate cells so that Google Classroom knows what to do with the scores in the rubric. If you choose to create the rubric, it actually sets everything up for you. And as you add sections to this rubric, it will automatically adjust the number of points. Notice that you can you give the criterion a title, describe it, start with your number of points, title that level and description, and then you can just keep adding. So if you do a four point rubric, and then you can also add um, another criterion in order to have, for example, content versus expression versus creativity, et cetera. And it will keep adding all of those things. Okay, we're going to X out that rubric. The other thing that you can do is you can reuse a rubric that you created in this class or in any other class. So if you have rubrics already done in this class or by pulling down in any other class, you can simply choose that rubric and select it and it will now be attached to this assignment as well. When you are ready, you can assign it right now, meaning it will be visible immediately, or you can schedule it for later. You can also obviously save the draft or discard the draft. Now that you've seen that, it's actually the most complex type of assignment you can create. So let's take a look at a couple other things. Question. This looks a little bit like what we saw before. Type your question here, provide your instructions. If you would like to add something from Google Drive, a link to a website, a file from your hard drive, or even a YouTube video for students to watch before answering the question, you can do so. If you would like to create something because it's not ready yet, you can click the Create button and create what the students will need. It defaults to short answer, but there is also a multiple choice option for the type of question. If you choose multiple choice, the only other thing to decide is whether or not you would like students to see a summary of responses that have come in once they submit their response. The default is yes. If you do short answer, which is the most common use for this, you're actually going to have the ability to turn this into an online discussion board. The default is that students can reply to each other. However, this only works if, in the settings, you allow the students to post and comment in the stream. If the students cannot post and comment in the stream, they also cannot see each other's replies to the question and they cannot reply to each other. You'll notice that this section looks very familiar choose which class or classes are going to receive the question, or if it's just one class, decide which students are going to respond, adjust the number of points, decide on a due date, 
by clicking and choosing something on the calendar, and then associate it with a topic. I do recommend that you use topics because that is the only way to organize the work. Otherwise, everything is just a huge list. Once you have once you have added your question, you can either ask it immediately or schedule for later. So as you can see, the features in Google Classroom, once you understand the interface, aren't that sophisticated. Um, there isn't a level two of Google Classroom, really. Let's create something else. If you want to create material that students will access and may need to access regularly, but that they're not going to write on, you can simply choose material, give it a description if you'd like, find your document and attach it wherever it is located. Notice that, and we're just going to choose the same document again, but we'll pretend it's a syllabus this time. Notice that you don't have to worry about them editing it. This is just material for them to consult. Choose which class or classes will receive it. Choose which students will receive it, if need be, and associate it with a topic if you would like to do so. Um, again, if you don't have the correct topic created yet, you can create a topic at any time. Okay, post that, post that material now or schedule it for later. The schedule for later feature is really nice if you, like me, did a lot of your planning one day a week for the coming week. And you could then create everything you needed to create, but um, not let the students see it until they need to see it. The last thing we will look at is the quiz assignment. This essentially generates a blank Google form where you can put in questions with automatic grading if you tell Google what the answer key is. Give it a title, provide your instructions. If you already have a Google form, you can actually find it here in your Google Drive and use it instead, and you could just delete this one. If you don't, it gives you a form that's already set up to be an automatically graded quiz as long as you tell it what the answers are. If your students are using managed Chromebooks, you can choose to turn locked mode on. Grade importing means that when Google Forms is done grading the quiz, it will automatically bring the scores into the gradebook in Google Classroom for you. When you look at the quiz, I do recommend you go into the settings for the blank form, whether it's one you already created or the one that it just provided for you. So you click on the settings, go over to quizzes. If you will have any open-ended questions, as opposed to multiple selection or multiple choice, it is important to choose later after manual review so that you have a chance to grade those questions before it releases scores to students. Okay. Once you do a question, um, it is going to try to be pretty smart. Notice it already thinks it knows the answer and it's right, so it's going to suggest Sacramento as one of the options, but then you can put in some other cities. And then you can click where it says answer key, adjust the point value, add answer feedback. So what would you like to tell students who get the wrong answer? Review our lesson from 331. You can provide a link or a YouTube video that helps them review and determine what answer would have been correct and why. You can also give them feedback for correct answers. And you can save that feedback. Um, and then you can add additional questions. So we aren't going to spend a lot of time on this because the focus is Google Classroom, but I did want to show you a little bit of an overview of that. So as always, once you have the quiz ready to go, you can assign it right now, or you can schedule it for later or save the draft if you need to come back to it later. So that is all for this overview of Google Classroom. I will create a second video with an overview of the gradebook later.